Hi, I'm Chris Frame, and welcome back to my channel. The time comes where the usefulness of a ship comes to an end. Advances in technology, changes in passenger expectations, or shifts in the use of ships, such as the transition from line voyages to cruising, means that older ships eventually become obsolete. But over the last few decades, the seemingly unstoppable growth of cruising has given many older ships a life extension. The desire of millions of people to take a cruise holiday meant that, despite there being hundreds of new cruise ships on the order books, shipyards just couldn't build new ships fast enough to meet demand. And as a result, older cruise ships have remained in service for longer than they might otherwise have been. Now, that's not to say that cruise ships weren't scrapped over the last 20 years. In fact, many famous ships have been lost to the scrapper's torch. But the COVID pandemic of 2020 and the subsequent cruise shutdown has led to more cruise ships being retired in this year than in any single year in recent memory. I've discussed what happens to cruise ships when they end their days in a recent video about recycling cruise ships, which you can view by clicking the info card or in the description below. The cruise ship shutdown has led to numerous older cruise ships ending their sailing days in 2020, with some unique and much loved ships recently being sold for scrap. There's a couple of notable ships that I'd like to point out in this video. Before we get started though, if you do enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. The first ship I wanted to discuss is Karnaka, which is reportedly destined for scrap at Alang in India. Now, if you haven't heard of Karnaka, it may be because she had only been sailing for the new Indian cruise line, Jalesh Cruises, for less than a year before the COVID pandemic crippled cruising. But the chances are you already do know this ship. You might remember her as either the 1990s built Crown Princess or by other names that she's worn throughout her career, including Ocean Village 2 or Pacific Jewel. Karnaka has had an interesting career. Designed by the famous architect Renzo Piano for Sitmar Cruise Line, the dolphin shape inspired design was transferred to Princess Cruises after its parent company, P&O, purchased Sitmar in the 1980s. Entering service in 1990 as Crown Princess, the ship was paired with a near-identical fleetmate, Regal Princess. Both ships sailed for Princess until the 2000s, when the Crown Princess was the first to leave the fleet. Departing Princess Cruises in 2002, she sailed first for Airosa as Airosa Blue, and then Aida as Aida Blue. In 2007, the ship was transferred to Ocean Village, and renamed Ocean Village 2, but only remained in that role for two years, before heading down under to become Pacific Jewel for P&O Cruises Australia. At P&O, she was reunited with the former Regal Princess, which was sailing as Pacific Dawn, and the twins worked alongside each other and another vessel designed by Sitma, the Pacific Pearl, which was the former Star Princess. This meant that for a brief period, the P&O Australia fleet was made up exclusively by Sitma designed cruise ships. Pacific Jewel left the P&O Cruises fleet in 2019, completing a farewell voyage that sailed from Sydney to Fremantle before heading north to Singapore. Here, the ship was transferred to sail for the newly established Jalesh Cruises. But sadly, her time in this role was cut short by the COVID pandemic. Despite plans to restart cruising in late 2020, it seems that the ship will never see another fair paying passenger, with news recently breaking that she has been sold for scrap at Alang. The Aster is another popular and much loved cruise ship that's destined for the scrapyard. Sailing for CMV, the 20,700 ton Aster had developed a loyal following in both Europe and Australia in recent years. Originally ordered by Safmarine for the England to South Africa line voyages, the ship was near identical in appearance to its namesake, the 1981 built Aster that Safmarine had been using on the service. Speedier than her predecessor, the new Aster could achieve 18 knots, but never entered service for Safmarine. Rather, starting her career in 1987, undertaking lengthy global cruises. A year later, the ship was sold to the Black Sea Shipping Company. Renamed and reflagged as a Soviet cruise ship, she was then chartered to Transocean Tours and started sailing from German ports on pleasure voyages. While the ship became a regular fixture in the Transocean Tours lineup, she was also chartered to a number of other smaller cruise brands, with her name reverting to Asta in 1995. The Asta first started sailing for CMV in 2013. This was first done on a chartered basis, but her popularity in the Australian market led to her becoming a permanent member of the CMV fleet. In this role, Aster would relocate each year to Australia in time for the Southern Hemisphere summer season, allowing the ship to offer a long line voyage between the UK and Australia as part of her itinerary. In 2019, the Aster was superseded in the Australian market by CMV's newer, larger Vasco da Gama, which prior to joining CMV had been sailing as P&O Australia's Pacific Eden. 
Sadly, the collapse of CMV saw Asta and her fleet mates laid up, with the ship recently sold to be scrapped in Turkey. There are two other CMV ships that cruise enthusiasts are worried about, and these are the Astoria and the Marco Polo. Both of these ships are among the oldest cruise ships afloat, and in fact the Astoria dates back a remarkable 72 years to 1948 while Marco Polo is a more sprightly 55 years of age. Although extensively rebuilt in the 1990s, Astoria started her career as the ocean liner Stockholm. Yes, THE Stockholm that collided with Andrea Doria in 1956. Marco Polo enjoys an interesting history as well, having originally been built as an ocean liner for the Soviet Union. Refurbished and revitalized in the 1990s, the ship is much loved by maritime historians and cruise enthusiasts. Astoria and Marco Polo, along with the Queen Mary II, were the last three ocean liners in service before the COVID-19 pandemic. And while Queen Mary II is the only ship offering regular transatlantic line voyages, these two ships really did attract a lot of attention with ocean liner enthusiasts. It is suspected by many that both Marco Polo and Astoria will meet their fate at a scrapyard in the coming months. However, there is yet to be any official confirmation of this widely held consensus, giving us hope that an 11th hour solution may save one or both of these classic ships. While some of our favourite older ships are meeting the end of their days during 2020, it's not all doom and gloom. Sea Jets recently acquired two of CMV's ships, the 1988-built Columbus, which is the former Pacific Pearl that I mentioned earlier in this video, as well as the 1988-built Magellan, formerly Carnival Holiday. These ships join a growing fleet at Sea Jets, which include the former Holland America Mastam and the Vindam, as well as P&O's former Oceana. There are a number of other cruise ships that have been scrapped throughout 2020. I have made a video about some of the other cruise ships that ended up in the Breakers Yard earlier this year, and you can check that out in the info card now or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you found the video interesting. If you liked the video, please give it a like and share and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Thanks once again for watching, and when it is safe for us to set sail again, I hope to see you on board.